Hello, there you go. That's so soft. Um, so first thing, guys, when we're looking at the restrictions, or when we're looking at simplifying a, um, when we're looking at simplifying this, we automatically see that we have a lot of fractions here, right? We have fraction, 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 fraction. The whole thing is a fraction, correct? So um, immediately what we can do is, well, we know there's some restrictions. We know there's some values that x cannot equal. Because if x equals 0, that goes to 0, right? So we know that right now x cannot equal 0, and we know x cannot equal 1. So immediately, just looking at the problem, I know x cannot equal 0, 1. So those are going to be two restrictions. So what you want to do is find the restrictions on your original problem. And then you want to go ahead and find the restrictions on the simplify problem. So how are we going to simplify this? Well, the way that I taught this for graphing rational equations or solving rational equations is really the same process I want to do here. I want to identify the LCD. That means the value that um, the common denominator of all of these denominators. And hopefully you guys can see that the LCD is really just going to be the product of these two denominators. Because x times x minus 1 is this, right? So I'll say x times x minus 1. I'll write it out in the factored form. So what I'm going to do now is multiply everything times x minus 1. <coughs> everything. All right. Now rather than showing all that work, I'm going to do a little bit of this mentally. So if I multiply this times this fraction, what would divide out? The x's, because you have x in the numerator, x in the denominator, right? So you'd just be left with 1 times x minus 1, which is just x minus 1. If I multiply this times this, I would be left with just the x. So it's going to be x plus 1 times x. Now be careful. This is a subtraction. So when you put a subtraction there, don't do this. Because what you're going to do is this is subtracting this whole expression. So you'd want to make sure you put that in parentheses. Be very careful with that. Okay. Um, the numerator, or denominator. When I multiply this times this, the x minus 1's divide out. So I'm left with 3x uh, times x. And then plus this times this. You can see both of those will divide out. So you're just left with a 1. So you guys see by multiplying by the LCD, I got rid of all those little fractions. Now I just have a numerator and a denominator. Right? It's a little bit easier to do. Now I can just go ahead and simplify this. So to go ahead and simplify this, I'll apply. Um, actually, I have double distributive property, right? So you could do, just do 1 at a time. So I have x minus 1. Let's see, that's going to be a negative uh, x squared. And this would be a negative x. All over a 3x squared plus 1. Now let's just combine some like terms. You can see those divide out. So we're left with um, negative x squared minus 1 all over a 3x squared plus 1. All right. Um, now let's go and look at our first. Let's go and s yes, question. Uh, on the quiz, do you want us to do it this way specifically? So we don't have to do like mark off and then do it this way. I didn't say that. No, like you just like mark off for random stuff, like not writing yeah. stuff like that. Why would I not r r mark off for writing random stuff? That doesn't well, make any no, sense. Well, no, I'm saying like if we don't write f of x, we like mark off at the point of them like giving us a Right. Question. Is it mathematically correct the other way? No, is, your, is the another way mathematically correct? It's the way we were in last year. No, is it, is, if you arrive at the same answer, I, as, long as, I can under, as long as you're mathematically arriving at it, I've already said last class period, what I'm showing is not the only way. If you have another method, as long as it's mathematically correct, as long as you're not making something up and you're arriving at some wrong answer, then yes, I, I can't mark you off for not doing something like, you don't have to, like, you know, for instance, I've already, yes, as long as you're doing mathematically correct operations, there's, there would be nothing for me to mark down. OK? Um, and therefore, now we look at this. And now, the other thing is we want to look at this restriction. Do we have any restriction here? Well, we know that this cannot equal 0, right? So if we set this equal to 0, 3x squared plus 1 is equal to 0, we'd get x squared is equal to negative 1 third x would equal plus or minus the square root of negative 1 third. Is there any real numbers that makes this denominator equal to 0? No, because taking the square root of a negative number, that's going to be a complex number, right? So therefore, these are our only restrictions. 
Okay? Another way you could verify this, just real quick, is you could also think of it like this. x minus 1, and sometimes this is an easier approach. For this problem, it's not. But x plus 1 plus 1 over x squared minus x is equal to 0. Because you know that this denominator cannot equal 0. So another way, Eli, that you could do is just go ahead and set this equal to x. And if you multiply it by x over x, then you'd have 3x squared equals negative 1. And you'd get the same idea right? that we kind of, your way, I talked about. Now, to kind of add to your point, you say, well, I, I don't like that method. I like using the Algebra 2 method. And that's 